Okay, I'll call the October 9th, 2018 regular planning and zoning commission meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call, please. Gamby. Here. Kimball. Here. Carrie. Here. Latham. Here. Stephenson. Here. Okay. We have a quorum. John, do we have any amendments to the agenda? <clears throat> there is none. Okay. Do we have any ceremonies, appointments, announcements, or presentations? No, there's not. All right. Do we have any declarations of conflict tonight from any of the commissioners? No. 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 Okay. <coughs> Uh, John, will you go through the consent calendar for us, please? <clears throat> yeah, item A is the minutes from the August 14th, 2018 hearing evening. The item B is the reasons decision for the Chile annexation file number ANNX 7, 2018. And the reason decision for the Meadow Vista subdivision file number SUBD 12, 2018. Okay, can I get a motion, please? I move to approve the consent calendar as is. Second. I second. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Hampy? Yes. Latham? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Carey? Yes. Stephenson? Yes. All right. That passes. On to citizen issues. This part of the, the meeting tonight is for citizens who wish to address issues that are not on today's agenda or any future agenda. Is there anyone out there that would like to address the commission any, on anything? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to item nine, the oath of office. So I think we'll all stand for yep. this. Stand, yep. Raise our hand, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Ray Kimball. Hi, Vicki Joe Carey. James Stephenson. Mark Latham. Nancy Hampy. A planning commission appointee of the city of Post Falls, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully perform the duties of my appointed office and will support the honor to the best of my ability, the constitutions of the United States and the state of Idaho and all applicable laws, ordinances and policies of the state of Idaho and the city of Post Falls, as well as the policies, procedures, Code of Ethics of the Post Falls Planning Commission. I hereby, through this oath, affirm that I will perform the duties of this public trust in fair, equitable, and ethical manner befitting the dignity and responsibilities of the office. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. Okay. Thank you, Amber. All right. Now we're on to the public hearings. So this is a uh, public hearing part. We have a sign-up sheet in the back there uh, on that podium. If you wish to comment or speak at the public hearing, uh, please sign up on that sheet and bring it down to Amber down here, and she will make sure that your comments and testimony is heard for the record. And with that, I will open the Worth Comprehensive Plan Amendment and Annexation File number CPA 0003-2018 and ANNX-0008-2018. Good evening, commissioners. John Manley, planning manager here, here to introduce the uh, comp plan amendment and annexation proposal being applied for by Brad Marshall, JUB engineers, and representing Philip Worth, and the owner, Thomas Hanley. So this is going to be a little interesting this evening. Instead of having a comp plan amendment that we present independent from the annexation, because the material is very similar, going over the exact same and having a duplicate um, material being presented, it was decided that we would consolidate it into, from a material standpoint, the same information, just speaking to the elements for the comp plan decision and the annexation a little bit different throughout this presentation. Okay. And at the end, there'll be two separate distinct motions. We'll need to run the motion for the comp plan amendment 
prior to the motion for a recommendation of zoning to city council as part of that annexation request. <clears throat> so inherently, yes, there is the request to amend the future land use map of the comp plan by adding additional designated lands to commercial. The comp plan speaks to where commercial would be appropriate along Highway 41 and that it supports commercial and office uses, public buildings, mixed use zones or planning and developments, recreation and park uses and school uses. Uh, the proposed location as you see here is near Highway 41 adjacent to other lands that have recently been decided to designate as commercial. What I've done here is bulleted out a one and a two. The, the area in yellow with the one, that was uh, designated residential before, which has recently been changed to commercial. Two was other undesignated lands that have recently been designated as commercial. What you see here in the hash box is adjacent to lands that are along Highway 41 and therefore uh, would be eligible for this request. In regards to the annexation, and I'll go back to this image here. So this area that you see here that's just recently been designated has now been um, recommended for approval to annex into the city with TM zone. The idea is the area that the hatch would be brought into this as one big project and be um, under its, its own separate development agreement, which I'll go into just this a bit. So here you see the code for the technology mix zone that it's for designed for well designated technological and in technological industrial parks that can accommodate some industrial and other professional office uses. But it requires this development agreement and the requirements of that are in um, this 1820 at 190. Um, currently, as the previous um, request was for that TM zone, there was some language regarding a percentage of multifamily that would be done outright with that TM zone for mixed use. It was originally approved, it was proposed at I, I believe 25%, but it got settled on about 15%. <clears throat> There's the project location. And once again, and highlighted in blue there is the area that's already been annexed or decided to annex. We are awaiting to formally adopt a resolution for this once um, pertaining to the comp plan, once this decision is rendered. So we would just have to do one resolution rather than having multiple resolutions. So this area, the 60 acres, is currently vacant. It's undefined, similar to the area I just spoke of, that two, which is now commercial. It's proposed for commercial. Service provider for water would be Ross Point Irrigation, with City of Post Falls providing sewer. So looking at the policies and this comp plan amendment proposal, I just highlighted the four. The staff report goes into more detail on other policies is to encourage a balance of land uses to help Post Falls remain a desirable, stable, and sustainable community. And ordinary activities should occur within walking distance of most residences. So this isn't a full aerial, but it's, uh, it kind of shows how things are moving going forward. We have the Tullamore development that started to the south and is approaching this development to Prairie Avenue at this location with Highway 41 running along the eastern boundary. And you have residences from about Charville West rooftops that will be in close proximity to um, what would probably be a work live activity node, commercial activity node down the road. And when you look at the zoning code, the yellow there is what's currently zoned residential. So that more than likely is going to be like R1 development. And we have through this red swath going down Highway 41, a mix of commercial and multifamily. So the residences that live in this area 
should be able to have easy access via either uh, walking or biking to multiple different amenities down the road upon development. And so the proposal would be in line with those uh, policies within the comp plan. Regulations that encourage the development of suitable scale commercial facilities throughout the community. When you look at this zoning map and an understanding that the Prairie Avenue is only going to get wider. If you look to the east towards Coeur d'Alene, it's already a five lane road in, in most of that area. Plus, Highway 41 is currently under construction to be, to be widened as well and upgraded. So having development more intense and more commercial in nature and providing jobs near those corridors would be in line with that policy as well as well as being in line with the Highway 41 corridor master plan. Commercial, use, commercial uses should be considered in areas indicated on a conventional future land use map as suitable for residential, commercial, or mixed use. Hence the request is if the amendment and the proposed comp plan amendment is approved for commercial, that would make them eligible for the mixed use part of that commercial, which would be that technology mixed use zone. Uh, zone. So that's kind of why they kind of go hand in hand, the comp plan amendment request as well as the technology mixed use zone being requested. Looking at the proposed zoning, that technology mix that goes along with the annexation request, because once again what we're doing is, is we're forwarding on a recommendation to council who will ultimately decide whether it should be annexed or an by based off annexation policies. We're looking at establishing the zoning for that annexation this evening. So here's just an overview right here of the, the six criteria that we'd be looking at. I'm going to go into a little more detail is, is, is the proposed zoning district consistent with the future land use map? Once again, that's why we're here and why the, the request. Should it be consistent with goals and policies found in the comprehensive plan? So kind of highlighted those, some of the policies. And once again, there's other policies that are in further detail that expand on a lot of those ideas and concepts. Zoning is assigned following consi consideration of such items as street classifications, traffic patterns, existing development, future land uses, community plans, geographic and natural features, it, with all the intent to encourage this balance of land uses to help re Post Falls remain a desirable, stable, and desirable community. So going back to, and I'm not going to want to reiterate a lot of what I've already stated, but you know, at the end of the day, it, it appears as if with, with the requests being made with the zoning we currently have out there, that with the improvements that are being planned for, that this area is looking to transform into more of a horizontal mixed use area where you have single family residences in, in close proximity to uh, uh, complementary uses. Commercial and high density residential development is typically assigned along streets with higher road classifications. That goes back to that commentary I had regarding the five lane road of Prairie, Highway 41, and the uses that are being planned along those corridors and are currently being developed. Limited or neighborhood commercial and lower density residential zoning is typically assigned for properties as they proceed farther away. So the request isn't really for lower density or neighborhood commercial, but you can look at this goes in hand in hand with the previous policy. It's just reinforcing that the nexus, that higher intense corridor should have higher intense uses. And the other criteria deals with industrial zoning, which the uh, technology mixed may have some industrial-esque type elements within it, and it should be near major transportation routes, major transportation routes, and situated away from residential zoning. So, in looking at that, you would have technology mix does plan for some residential elements within it, but it would be more than likely for that district at a higher in density. And then you have Prairie Avenue with that transition from some of that multifamily on Highway 41 
to some of the lower dense residential development and zoning. So with this request, these are the agencies that were routed. We did receive some comments. Both the Post Falls Police Department and Kootenai County Fire were neutral with uh, Kootenai County. They had no concerns uh, with the proposal. So I'd stand for any questions you have for me regarding the comp plan proposal or the annexation. Once again, reiterate, there are two motions at the end here, one for each. Okay. Do I have any questions for John? No. Okay. So, applicant, Mr. Marshall. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> okay. Good evening, Chairman and Commission members. I'm Brad Marshall with JEB Engineers, uh, 7825 Metal Arc Way in Coeur d'Alene. Um, again, it's an honor to represent Philip Worth, who's uh, purchasing this property from Tom Hanley, and I was hoping Tom Hanley would be in, in the audience as well. He's certainly aware of the application and has signed the documents. Um, as before, we'd like to thank the Commission uh, for your time and being here tonight and volunteering for our, our community. Um, also, I'd like to thank the staff for their help on the, the application process. Um, always great to work with both Falls uh, Community Development and Engineering Department staff. Um, I'll try to be short. Um, on the flip side, um, I'm going to cover some comments and maps and stuff that John's already covered. He kind of stole my thunder. Um, but I've also covered some of these documents in prior hearings, both on the adoption of the technology make zone as well as the prior comprehensive plan and annexation on the property to the east of the site. Um, again, as John mentioned, we're requesting to amend the comprehensive plan, uh, designating 60 acres as commercial, um, and also annexation of the same 60 acres to the city um, with 60 acres of technology makes zoning. Uh, this, again, indicates the future land use map of the city and that where it says proposed commercial designation is a site. Um, this is part of the development of what we call the Inland Northwest Technology Park, which is owned by uh, Beyond Green Incorporated, which Philip Worth is a partner in, in that project. Um, encompasses a, a retail shopping regional shopping center on the northeast corner of Highway 41 um, and, and Prairie, which will emerge over time as rooftops are developed and the highway 41 is reconstructed it involves the technology park which extends from prairie to hayden avenue um, which is a little over 300 acres which you've, you've seen before and you'll notice kind of this 60 acre parcel on the west side uh, that we've done some preliminary conceptual site planning that indicates some extensions of streets uh, which is cecil it's on north south street um, that's a, i believe a collect future collector and the dark black indicates rooftops, the gray indicates uh, potential parking areas, and the gray indicates the streets, and the green indicates um, green space or open space, and again, the intent is to develop a campus of uh, uh, business high-tech, um, potentially light industrial, some service uh, business, such as restaurants, coffee shops, uh, child care, and those types of supporting industries. Um, as you're probably being Post Falls uh, folks, you're probably familiar with the area. Again, we're on Highway 41 in Prairie. Again, we believe the site is pretty strategically located mm -hmm. to, to workforce in Post Falls, Rathrum, Hayden, and, uh, and northeast, excuse me, northwest Coeur d'Alene. Um, it's also kind of centrally located to the KTEC, uh, as well as the North Idaho College Technical Education Centers, which just are two miles away. And probably more strategically, it's located just a mile or two from uh, the high power KV power lines and natural gas transmission lines, which these industries uh, tie, tie into as well. Um, this is a, uh, as you're thinking about the comprehensive plan amendment, this is a, a reflection back on the SMART code that was adopted 10 years ago after a lot of debate, a lot of public hearing process, and it designated this as a G2 designation. Uh, which had basically mixed use uh, opportunities in that. And as you look cl and closer in this document, it some more supports a mixed use development of this property. 
Um, there's a lot of plans that speak to the development of this property. This is the Highway 41 corridor plan. It's called the, this sheet's called the Corridor Improvement Strategy. It's kind of tough to look at it quick, um, but the bottom line is it calls out improvements on Highway 41, which was the foundation document that got the funding for the reconstruction of the highway that will start in about two years. Um, and the foundation of future collectors and arterials, in, in this case, these are Charville and Cecil and Greens Ferry that run uh, north-south from Post Falls to Rathrum. Uh, this property ties in. In fact, it's adjacent to Cecil again. So we'll a five-lane, excuse me, a three-lane collector adjacent to the property and on the south side Prairie Avenue, which will be a five-lane arterial. Um, this is a tough-to-read map, but the, end of, um, the intent of this map is this is the Rattan Prairie Sewer Master Plan. And uh, it speaks to this property, and it speaks a long-term how this property would be serviced by City of Post Falls Sewer. As you're looking at amending comprehensive plans or annexing property, there's a, a natural state law requires can the city reasonably service this property with utilities and uh, this speaks of long-term sewering the property in addition to that plan is the recent completed northeast quadrant sewer study and uh, this was a sewer study that was wrapped up in the last couple months um, that kind of looked at areas just um, adjacent to highway 41 uh, west over to cecil uh, north well beyond Prairie Avenue and over to the my excuse me Hutter Road and uh, it solves some pretty big sewer questions and provides a plan to service these properties in that corridor um, and what, what's pretty fascinating is that the urban renewal agency is is working with the city to fund some of those preliminary uh, projects uh, which includes lift stations and, and um, additional sewer mains um, Critical to the uh, to this project, the tech park is fiber. You know, we, we can't live without fiber every day of our lives. And uh, today, um, what's called fat bean fiber runs up uh, Highway 41. Um, uh, and as the Highway 41 is reconstructed, additional lines will be installed as part of that project. So there'll be a nice fiber corridor that runs up 41 and, and down Hayden Avenue and, and beyond. So pretty strategic. Um, population boom. Uh, we've talked about this before, but it's, it continues to be a relevant point. You know, we, we talk about you know, Post Falls growing to potentially 90,000 people in 20 years, and, and we see a lot of that growth starting to occur right now. The, the reality is people need a place to work, um, you know, and we'd like to keep kids home and working in our community, and we're doing a good job with developing KTEC and the North Idaho College Career Centers and developing uh, bachelor degree programs at NIC's campus. Um, but the bottom line is, can we develop more uh, opportunities and in industry in our town to keep folks from commuting to Spokane or leaving, leaving the area and <coughs> potentially reducing trips? Um, that, that's kind of the part and intent of the, of the project. Um, as John mentioned, again, we're amending, proposing to <coughs> amend the conference plan to commercial and followed right behind that is the proposed annexation with a technology make zoning for the 60 acres. Uh, again, the intent is to tie in with the Inland Northwest Technology Park. Um, uh, zoom through that slide we, we've kind of covered. Um, and, and again, a reminder, um, the Technology Park has gone through the annexation process is zoned uh, technology mixed, uh, proposing to annex and zone this the same. Um, John covered this again, but I think it's relevant for the entire audience is, what is a technology make zone as part of the annexation? Again, it's a, it's a zone that provides for well-designed technological industrial parks that can, can accommodate light industrial, technological <clears throat> professional office with limited commercial and residential uses to support the workshop live environment. Um, it requires the a approval of a development agreement at the tail end of the process as development moves forward. That development agreement requires certain frontage improvements, sewer and water extensions, um, traffic signals, that supporting infrastructure, make sure everybody's on, on the same page. Um, our goal is, is to attract industry like Micron that's in Boise, which is a major industry and a major employer in the, in the state is obviously in Boise as well. Uh, another uh, industry 
similar industry is Intel. Both these companies make, very frankly, they make microchips. Um, and these companies require and use a lot of power to do it, and they use a lot of water to do it. This site has both, and both at a very competitive rates. Um, again, we, we hope to bring them to the area. Um, it's a reminder that this is not an industrial zoning request. Uh, it's not a heavy industrial zoning request. If you look around town, we've got some heavy industrial uses right here in this area, the old the lumber mills that have some outside industrial uses. We've got industrial zones on the, the west side of town along Celtis and on the east side of town. So there's a demand and a need for that those industries, but sometimes they have um, some some impacts, whether or not it's odor or smell or, or outside storage, that may not be a, a good fit for a technology or business <coughs> park. So that's the difference, um, the unique difference uh, that, that we hope to, to bring. Um, good examples of this um, are right in our backyard. Um, the Riverbend Commerce Park, uh, West Post Falls, is a, a very well-designed project with great CCNRs that protect the integrity of that project. Interesting enough, it's zoned industrial, but without those CCNRs, we might have a, a little different product. Uh, the Liberty Lake uh, Business Parks, uh, were, um, again, that's a, a very well-done business park that we hope to, to compete with. Uh, it's a campus, well-designed well buildings, well-designed landscaping. Um, Again, technology makes zoning. Um, so with that said, on uh, behalf of uh, Philip Worth, uh, the partner of Beyond Green, I would request approval of the comprehensive plan amendment to commercial, which would then allow the annexation and the technology makes zoning, um, which you, you kind of all ties together. And I stand for questions. Do you have any questions for Mr. Marshall? I don't. Thank you, so much. All right. So this is the time for public comment. Um, again, if you would like to speak uh, on this project, uh, please make sure you sign up in the back there, and then bring one, uh, bring your app or your your sign-up sheet down to Amber here. Uh, Amber, do we have anyone to speak for? No. Anybody neutral? No. Nope. Or against? No. Nope. Okay. So no need to, for rebuttal. So before we close the public hearing, do we have any questions for staff about this? No. Okay, I will close the public hearing and open it up to discussion by the commission. Mr. Stephenson, what do you think? I think it makes sense. I mean, it's just a little more extension. The city's gonna get bigger. Um, I don't think they would be even presenting this if they didn't have some sort of interest, which they've already talked about before. So I think it just makes sense. It's um, since it will be mixed use, you know, it's kind of going farther west um, than it would be normally off of 41. But I think that'll it'll help, and you know, 41 is going to get widened. And hopefully, this part of this project maybe it'll get. Prairie widened in that area a little bit quicker than it normally would have without any development. So I think it makes sense. Okay. Ms. Carey? Um, I agree. I think it makes sense. It's an, a natural extension of what they've already um, got there. And, and I also think that they wouldn't be adding more acreage if they didn't have some pretty good interest in getting this property developed. Mr. Latham? Yep. I don't have any other comments. I think it makes sense and uh, good presentation. I appreciated that. Ms. Hemby? I agree with the other commissioners. Perfect. Um, my thoughts are pretty straightforward on this. I, I do think Post Falls has got a little bit of an overabundance of commercial property. Um, but what we don't have an overabundance of is this tech, technology mix zone. And I think yeah. where this comp plan to just stand on its own as a change to do commercial, I don't know if I would be very much in favor of it, but because it is riding with this technology mix zone, I think it makes a lot of sense. So with that, I will look for a motion on the comp plan amendment. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. I move to approve the comprehensive plan amendment file um, CPA 0003-2018 with a commercial zoning. 
We have a second. Second. At a roll call, please. Stephenson? Yes. Harry? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Latham? Yes. Campy? Yes. Okay. And now for the annexation with zone. Looking for a motion. Uh, with respect to file number ANNX 0008-2018, I move for approval to annex um, with the zoning de designation of TM Technology Mix. Okay. Do we have I'll, a second? I'll second that. Okay. Motion and a second. Roll call, please. Hampy? Yes. Latham? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Carry? Yes. Stephenson? Yes. All right. Both motions pass. And on to new business. This is fiscal year 17 report. Jamie. Jamie. Good, good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. I'm here to present. Let me get this out. The development, development impact fee report for 2017. The impact fees are payments required by local governments of new developments for the purpose of providing new or expanded public capital facilities required to serve the community and new developments. The fees are used to shift the cost of financing public facilities from the general taxpayer, so new development isn't um, paid for by you know, the existing tax base. The data in the 2017 development impact fee report reflects beginning balances, impact fees, collected other revenues, expenditures, interest, funds, totals, and the roads, parks, and public safety projects that received impact fees during the fiscal year of 2017. It approximated $1.8 million and 1.5 of the impact fees were spent on roads, parks, and public safety projects to assist with mitigating growth in the community. This is the summary of the 2017 impact uh, fee fiscal report. As you can see circled in red is the total of the impact fees at 1.8 million. And we have expenditures for roads, parks, and public safety, which are all starred. We have a total impact fee to of $7.7 .7 million. So those are impact fees collected this year mm -hmm. or last year? Yes, okay. correct, yeah. This is just a summary of how the impact fees were spent for public safety. And this is a summary of the parks. We have Beck Park, Tullamore, Land Acquisitions, Sportsman Park, Parking Lot, Crown Point, and the Post Falls Community Trailhead. And then last we have roads. And you can see that there's a beginning balance of in, Three million dollars, and they totally spent. Um, and the total pro street projects ended up being three point seven, three hundred seventy-two thousand. Sorry. I stand for any questions you guys might have about any of this. Um, I had a question for mostly just for Mr. Melvin, but it has to do with uh, just kind of a clarification on traffic impact fees and what, how it works with how much how much of the work that gets done for projects around city of post falls is done by traffic impact fees versus um, other methods of funding like city or just the general fund or regular taxpayer dollars can you address that for us bill yes absolutely um uh, commission members um, you know first of all how do we you know, determine our transportation impact fees um, and how do we actually manage our transportation system within the city of Post Falls? Um, the, the, approximately every five years, the city embarks on updating our master plans, and those are our water, wastewater, and transportation, and, and generally parks master plans. Within the transportation master plan, 
we're, we're working with the planning division on projecting um, land uses and growth rates and where those growth rates and land uses are going to occur throughout the community on a 5, 10, and a 20-year projected horizon. Um, from that, um, we work with um, transportation modelers. They, they project the traffic that will occur and indicate um, the areas of the town that we're going to have um, capacity congestion and, and safety issues. So that's like a tra citywide traffic study? Citywide traffic study. Transportation okay. master plan is what it is. And so from there, we'll develop um, um, a 5, a 10, and a 20-year capital improvement program for that that'll have um, you know, multiple projects for intersection widening um, and, and you know, signalization and maybe an installation of a roundabout in that area to take care of uh, capacity and safety issues that that capital the, the costs of all those capital improvement programs are broken down into the projected trips that will generate um, over over that 5 10 and 20 year period and then from that we can determine what impact fees will be based upon a use as projected trips so that's that's generally how we determine impact fees and and use those um, roadway widening um, as far as you know, generally adding lanes and road widths are usually done by development. Development widens their intersections. We, we might do some traffic impact analysis occasionally to see if an intersection or see if a project is going to trigger one of the improvements within a plan. But the majority of those are paid for out of impact fees. So projects like you've seen, like Seventh Avenue um, and some of the other more, you know, we have the Southeast Congestion Mitigation Project that's going on now where we're um, installing signals at. Compton and Henry um, and Spokane Street and Mullen, those are impact fee related projects. They're, sometimes they're supplemented by grants if we're fortunate to get competitive okay. with grants, or sometimes they'll be supplemented by urban renewal dollars. But general tax dollars are, are really not um, included into our transportation, major transportation widening of our system. Growth pays for itself. So the dollars that a general citizenry is paying on their, for taxes go for maintenance, uh, more maintenance purposes of the roadways, the dollars are spent those. So you're, you're not seeing impact fees spent for maintenance purposes, nor are you generally seeing a lot of general fund dollars being spent for expansion due to growth. Um, the concept is that growth will pay for itself relative to transportation. So. Okay. So um, is that other revenues, is that with general fund or? Correct. Okay. In, in this particular instance, this other revenues were, were dollars that um, were reimbursed to us. We, we partnered with Urban Rural Agency on the Spencer Street okay. um, extension project a couple years ago, and that's what this, you know, There's some pretty big ones in, in some of these other, because we have a more extensive, yes. the, the more yeah, so I mean, we're looking at 54,000, and I mean, there's some pretty big ones so, and, so, in other revenues. So, some of those are where we've maybe been fortunate to get a grant okay. or, or, to, or to pursue with, or, you know, or, or partner with the Urban Renewal Agency as well okay. on keeping the transportation up. But, but they're not general fund tax dollars that are included. Okay, thank you. That, that answers it. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank, thank you. you. Do we have any more, any other questions mm -hmm. for staff regarding the, do we need a motion on this or just, is this more informational? Um, yeah. State law requires you guys as the impact fee advisory board to review uh, the uh, what was being presented is more or less a report to you as a body if you have any concerns or questions regarding the the data that's presented within that okay so no motion required no nope. okay and it'll proceed on to city council as well perfect okay that takes us i think to adjournment unless there's any staff comments or commission comments no additional no. Okay. For a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I second. Second. Adjourned.